welcome and thank you for choosing to join me again. I gained a little bit of time. I had a very chaotic week, but I had a chance to sit down and record this. So what we're going to discuss today is going to be general things. What should you have in your mind when you step into your bridal appointment? It's very important if you get a stylist that is going to go 100% into it and give you all the options. As I mentioned to you in my very first video, and if you haven't had a chance to watch it, I would encourage you to go ahead and do it. I will also post the link right here just for you to kind of browse a little bit through what the factors would be in order to help you decide why this dress, why this store, why this fabric, and why this much money. So I've created a video that would give you a couple of extra tips. I think it's very important for you not to start your journey being chaotic, crazy stress. Uh, we just want you to be as happy as possible, as excited as possible at all times. And I just want you to create an amazing memory around all this buying dress process, whether you're coming with your besties, whether you're coming with your future mother-in-law, with your mother, with your maid of honor, whoever's joining you, create some great, amazing memories. We as women, we need to be really realistic. As I mentioned to you in my previous video, not everybody can wear everything. Unfortunately, this is a reality. I don't wanna discourage you. I just want you to understand the reality of the actual silhouette and the proportions and what works and what doesn't. In bridal, everything fits a lot different and I find most of the time, the dresses are going to run smaller. It's not a secret in a bridal industry that sometimes a bride that it's a size 12 is going to fit very comfortable in a size 14. If the dress is really a bit small for you, most of the time uh, it could be let out from the side seams. Every single bridal gown that I've ever touched and that I know and all the designer that I work with, like Zach Posen, Vera Wang, Melissa Sweet, Ole Cassini and others, they would have at least one inch inside the seam. So you would be able to let your dress out out for about a size. Every bridal gown should be able to be let out one size and taken in two sizes. I never recommended my brides to take a wedding dress in for more than two sizes because it changes the proportion. A bodice for a size 16 and a bodice for a size 8 or 10 is going to be a lot different in length. And so that's going to really affect the proportion the waistline is going to is not going to fit in the same place. Your bust darts are not going to fit in the same place. The bust cups are not going to fit right. The waist is going to drop and so many other issues. So I would never encourage you to buy a dress that it's a lot bigger. Don't buy your dress too early if you think you're going to go through a dramatic change. I've had a bride once who had a gastric sleeve, I think you call those things. I'm really not sure. However, she went through a process of having her stomach made smaller. So within a couple of months, she lost a massive amount of weight. From where she started with her original appointment, and I advised her not to buy her dress at that time to when she came back she was half of what she was imagine if she purchased her, her dress size 18 women and she would try to bring it down to 12 that dress would be a disaster would cost a lot of money to alter and it would not look right so you already set your appointment you step into the store you have the people that you're supposed to have and i'm going to take a minute here to just tell you that it's pointless for you to bring someone that is not going to be supportive. Try to keep those people away from your appointment. It's going to bring a little bit of unnecessary drama. You have to be the star, you have to be the decision factor, and the appointment has to be yours for the sake of you trying to have a peaceful, beautiful appointment, trying to learn something and eventually try to pick a dress. Keep the opinionated person out of that appointment. So going back to your appointment, if you are an A, B or a small C cup, maybe don't worry about undergarment for your appointment. If you do decide to bring any type of undergarments to your appointment, try to get nude undergarments. The bridal stylist is also gonna hand you undergarments, meaning it's the bridal corset with a lot of boning who supports especially a bigger bust, and also a petticoat, which petticoat are necessarily for a flat A-line. If you want a huge, one of those ball gown effect, uh, you want a mermaid and you want to accentuate the flare, that's going to be knitted. Don't stress for undergarments. Don't go and spend money for undergarments if you go to the bridal appointment because that's going to be taken care of in the store. 
Now shoes, when you go for your appointments, I notice that a lot of brides are going to bring some random pair of shoes they have at home, which is fine. But most of the bridal showrooms are going to give you shoes. They are usually going to ask, what do you think you're going to wear for your wedding? We discussed in the first video of this bridal series, your venue, how important it is your venue in deciding your dress. So if you think you're going to have a backyard wedding, if you think you're going to have a beach wedding, if you think you're going to have something like really low key, so don't bother investing in your wedding shoes until you actually have the dress. I have seen brides before going and finding a very nice pair of shoes and they designed the entire look because the shoes were that a statement piece and you're going to have either a high-low dress or you're going to have a short dress. My tip for you is always try your dress with the pair of shoes. The posture is changing dramatically when you're wearing a pair of shoes versus being barefoot. I'm sure by now you are already at your appointment, you've been browsing the social media, you kind of really have an idea of where you want to go. Walk a little bit around the showroom and understand what designers they're working with. Every store has more of a high-end designer versus a kind of like more of a low-budget designer. So browse a bit around, have that conversation with your stylist. I think sharing all your concerns and sharing your vision with your stylist is going to be the secret in you finding the one. As we discussed in my previous video, if you choose a stylist that is very experienced, a good stylist would know the inventory really, really well and would be able to find the dress that is going to work the best for you. Tell her what you strongly dislike, tell her what you absolutely love, uh, tell her a little bit about your event. As soon as you let your bridal stylist in, your vision, she's going to be able to think at that point at every style she has in a store, every designer, and everything that she could put in your fitting room for you to try. Another important thing, let her know your budget. If you tell a bridal stylist that your budget is going to be $1,500, a good stylist should not bring you dresses over $1,000 to try. If your overall budget for your look is going to be $1,500, then if she's bringing you $1,499 dresses, then you only have one dollar left for your accessories and the garments and for your alterations. Your bridal stylist is your key to have an amazing appointment. How are we going to pick the best stylist? Watch my first video in my bridal series and you'll figure out how to find the best stylist that is going to do an amazing job for you. She's gonna make sure she's introducing you to the most amazing style that should work best for you that is going to be the closest to your body type, the closest to your silhouette, to your proportion, to your vision, to your budget. So the very first dress you put on is going to be so important for you to decide. Don't dress up with accessories every dress you put on. It's taking time and it's useless. You're not gonna love it more if you put a veil or a belt. When you love the dress, when you think that's your, gonna be your dress, make sure you add the accessories, dress it up, and if you absolutely love it, then say yes to the dress. That is going to be your dress and you're going to look amazing. If none of the dresses in your fitting room are exactly what you really wanted, have another conversation with your stylist and make sure you kind of redesign a little bit. If one of the dresses that you absolutely love is going to take too much work, it's going to take a lot of money to achieve the right. It takes a very skilled bridal seamstress to achieve that look for you. Every dress out there that you want to change for something else, most likely there is a designer already who created that dress. It's just for you to redesign your mood board and change the direction, but let your stylist know that you change your mind. Using the very first dresses you put on to learn what you dislike and what you like. If you are absolutely set on an A-line, try a strapless A-line, try an illusion neckline, try a sweetheart neckline, try some sleeves on your, on your A-line, uh, try a corset back on your A-line. Try to play a little bit with that silhouette because you're going to learn exactly your likes and dislikes by trying, right? Unless everybody cried a river at the appointment, I would encourage you not to buy your dress at your very first appointment. Give it a bit of time, 
look over the pictures it's okay to take a step back take a day or two in between so we've discussed today what should you expect at your bridal appointment should you step back or should you buy the dress in your very first appointment bridal it's a complex subject there is so much to say and i'm trying to make small videos where i give you a couple of hints about what exactly happens from the minute you get engaged to the minute you're going to wear your dress and you're gonna be happy and satisfied and knowing that that's the best dress for you. Thank you again for watching and I hope you like my video and if you haven't watched my very first video of this bridal series, please do so. Uh, it's going to kind of organize a little bit where you should start, how to start all your process and come back here next time because I'm going to go a little bit more into details, into what alteration means. We're going to discuss as well about the actual silhouette, how to change dresses, how to see your vision, and so much more. Thank you, ladies. Have a wonderful afternoon. See you here next time. Bye.